As I lay on the vibrating aluminum deck of the helicopter on my way out of the hell I experienced for over a week, I knew I would never return to this part of the wilderness. I was done, all used up, spent. I had nothing left, nothing left to give, nothing left to take. Nine of us and a dog headed into the forest eight days ago. As far as I knew then, I was the only one to return. Two confirmed dead, two more almost certainly dead, and the rest missing, presumably dead. I was lucky to be alive, but I sure didn't feel lucky. What we did to ourselves and to each other out there in the cruel forest in order to survive was appalling, to be sure, but I was alive. They were not. I would have to live with what happened for the rest of my life. When we gently touched down on the landing pad near the ocean, I had to be helped out of the aircraft. My knees buckled when I set my tired and beaten feet upon the firm ground and I clapped in a heap of quivering flesh. I vomited and was thankfully only able to produce a small amount of foul bile. I had to be carried to one of the bunkhouses of the camp. I cried, not from the physical pain that racked my beaten body, but from despair. So much had happened in so little time. I was completely overwhelmed. My poor brain could not face any more input. I wanted to help save those left behind, at least those I suspected were still alive, but I could not. Barely conscious, I was almost oblivious to what was happening around me. Garbled voices enveloped me as artificial light filtered through the haze that was now my mind. Try as I might, I could not get up. I just lay there in a stupor for I don't know how long. Suddenly a sense of urgency swept over me as I thought of those left behind. Pity, sorrow, self-regret all ratcheted through my weary soul. I knew someone had to do something, and quickly, but I could not. I passed out. When I came to, the man with the radio, the glorious leader of the shape block cutting crew, met my bleary gaze. He had been chosen to assist the rescue attempt. The weather had taken a turn for the worse, and heavy fog was preventing normal search and rescue services from gaining access to the area. It was decided by the shape camp contractor to launch a rescue attempt using assets on hand. He gallantly put his entire operation into the rescue effort, including the helicopter and select members of his shape block cutting crews. They crowded around me, topographical maps in hand, and listened to my brief account of what had happened and where it had happened. I passed on as much information as I could, information that would aid them in finding the survivors and help them deal with the extreme conditions they were sure to encounter. I stuck to times and locations and left out various other details, such as what we did to each other out there. When I could tell them no more, they left me. I wish I could have told them more, but I needed time to process, figure out what went wrong and why. One of my greatest regrets of life is that I was not able to go with them. Of course, the poor condition I was in would only serve to hamper them. I would be a liability, not a help at all in such a place. The beast was still out there and hungry for more, that I was sure of. Thank <laughs> you.